Hey gamers, it's Wintermute here from Grind This Game. Back with Oxygen Not Included. I haven't given up on this game. It's been a while since I uh, did a video on it though. I've been kind of digging out the entire base. But I just wanted to show you kind of how crazy the lag is when you first start up the game. So it's, it took about three minutes to load to this point, but then usually what I do is I unpause and then repause. And you can kind of see it if you watch this right hand side here. You can kind of see it loading in and finding all the stuff on the map. It takes a while for it to kind of load everything in. And it's probably because uh, I've dug out almost the whole map. It looks pretty crazy. Uh, and I put in a floor every four floors or so. It's not perfect. At some places it's uh, not, quite this, not quite four, but uh, the main base is kind of in the center here, and our grow sleet wheat room is in here on the left. This has been way more way more than we needed to feed everyone. And I was up at uh, 40 dupes at one point, but it just was too laggy with 40 dupes, so I kind of scaled it back to we're at 16 now. And you can kind of see if I zoom in here. Oh, all the bones are gone. Interesting. So if you disassemble one of these memorials, uh, some bones will pop out, some skeletons. And you can't really sweep up the skeleton. I'll see if I can do it here. Might take a while to deconstruct that, but let's see. So you get some you get some skeleton, but if you look at the tooltip it says that it's coal. And it's I think it's just kind of bugged out. And there's no way to stuff it back in a memorial, I think, once it's out. Oh, we got bed beyond reach. Aha! It really is out of reach. He'll be okay though. He's got lots of oxygen. We should probably build him a little ramp though. So he can get out of there. I've been using igneous rock. I know it's not the best, but I got tons of it, so... And I'm kind of saving the chlorine areas for the final, the final dig. Probably could just dig our way out here. Lag! Okay. He can dig himself out. We might let a little bit of the chlorine out, but that's okay. So yeah, I had to kill off, uh, about 25 dupes and that helped the lag slightly. What it really helps though is that at, when I had 40 dupes, dupes would just randomly die like all the time. They'd be sitting in the base, they'd have lots, lots of oxygen and they'd just die. There'd be no warning and I'd have to reload from a save and it got really annoying. And there's kind of no way to prevent it so that's why I scaled back. So the whole top is done pretty much, except for a few bits over here. And I had my hydrogen bubbler system up here, but it was just way too slow and it was not very good. So that was, I think the last video I did was on that. It was it was neat and I wanted to try it out. And it was cleaning the oxygen, but it was just too slow. and So I kind of aborted that mission. And we got really high pressure polluted oxygen in this area here. So I've opened up the base so it can flow in. Polluted oxygen. So if you look here, actually it's not so high pressure anymore, but before it was at like I think 12 or 14 kilograms per tile. I don't know how it got so pressurized in there, but I opened up the door to the base to kind of let it pressurize the base. And I'm basically using dupes as a polluted oxygen cleaner. So eventually they'll just breathe it all out. And there's tons of clean oxygen over here. Uh, I haven't let it in yet. It's kind of freezing though. It's at negative 30. Yeah, it would kind of be a bit chilly for the base. Eventually we'll warm things up. We'll get it all settled. All my polluted uh, water is going right here. And it's kind of I had like a vessel here and it would flow over here and then flow over here. It's kind of broken down though over time under pressure. 
So I had this wall here opened up for a while, but because the polluted oxygen was so high pressure here, it pressurized all this area here. And then my CO2 scrubbers couldn't keep up, and basically all my power halted because the pressure was too high over here. So I'm letting it, now it's kind of lowish pressure, which is good. I kind of want this half of the base to be low pressure for now. Eventually, well, once in a while I mop up this giant polluted water pool here. I might try to build some kind of steam cleaner at the bottom of the map once I dig it all out. And we're pretty close. So we have this area here, and the very bottom is right here. So we might be able to get it done this episode, especially if I skip ahead parts, because watching dupes dig is not super interesting. Kind of mop as I go, clean up this mess. And I should probably be do a sweep as well, because I got lots of junk. I've heard this causes lag, but um, what I've noticed is if I sweep this all up, the lag is exactly the same. So I think just the fact that there's so many different materials on the map causes, you know, it's trying to model all the gases and stuff, and it's and having to keep track of every single thing. I read one comment that said, um, kind of cordon off some areas and then suck out all the gases and, and make a vacuum. And that's probably not a bad idea. But I do want to get this all dug out first. If you're going to attempt something like this, I suggest you don't take on any more than probably 20 dupes, because the more dupes actually just make it overall slower and they just start de dying randomly. And I don't think it's like a computer speed thing because uh, my CPU is not very loaded at all. It's at like 20-30% and I got tons of RAM, 32 gigs of RAM, so it's not, it's, not a, it's not a question of computing power, I don't think. And it's not, it's not the graphics that are slowing down, it's the CPU. I suspect the game's just not threaded very well, so I can't really do um, all its calculations in parallel. And you can kind of tell it's, when the game starts up and it's kind of cycling through all this stuff, you can tell it's probably like going kind of through its whole kind of coordinate system and looking up all the items as it fills them in. Something like that in a big giant game loop. But I'm only guessing. I didn't write the thing. Got some really hot areas down here. This phosphorus is like 700 degrees. So when we eventually crack in here, maybe we'll flood it with this polluted water and cool it all down. There's no real reason to do this, like dig out the whole map, but I just thought it would be fun. And I've never done it before. And if I'm able to get this all done kind of before the next game update comes, I'm going to try to build a second base on the map and kind of seal it off from the other base and see what it's like to run two bases in one map. Everything I want done is like priority nine. I find if I do priority eight, uh, it just they just they never do it. So if you take a look at the whole map though, with the temperature overlay, you'll see that cold is basically the winner, and it kind of makes sense. We're in, we're inside of an asteroid. It's probably like super cold on the outside of the asteroid. It's hot up here because I've got one space heater, and it's heated this whole area, which is pretty crazy. And then wherever, wherever there's uh, steam geysers, it's hot around them. Especially here because I don't have um, abyss light tile surrounding it. And then I want the base to be nice and toasty, around 37, 38 degrees. It's a little bit cooler close to the growing room because the glowing, the glowing room, it is not glowing. The growing room is uh, super cool, usually about minus 20. I'm keeping it cool in two ways. I have cold oxygen I'm putting through a thermoregulator over here in this cold area and pumping it in. It's overpressurized right now with cold, so it's not really. And then I've got a cooling, liquid cooling system, that kind of radiating system that just takes polluted water from down here and loops it. Loops it through the room, keeps it cool. Now this thing may be causing the lag kind of want to just destroy it and see if the leg goes away, but uh, then my sleet wheat would probably overheat 
I am thinking of building kind of a simpler growing ro uh, room system outside outside the base like maybe this is all like freezing so I might build some some grow rooms right in this area here you'll notice this is all sealed off so like uh, not to oxygen but to dupes and I wanted to see if that helped with the lag so these compartments that I'm not using I'm sealing off and eventually I'm gonna seal off a bunch here not the ones with storage compactors but all the ones without and then maybe someday eventually I'll consolidate all the storage compactors and put them in one one place but they, they're spread out because it reduces the time it takes for them to clean up all the crap as I was digging all this out I do have a power system that goes up here I should probably just clean that all up and our liquid so most of the water from the base comes up from up here this steam geyser and I pump it down using a liquid valve and try to keep it at this level here it took a bit of adjusting but now it kind of maintains at this level and then I also use a liquid valve from here to here and this water is used uh, for like filling algae and stuff so they can just go in here and grab it and it's a decent temperature same with this one. It's pretty pretty good temp. I've got some CO2 trapped here and chlorine gas. We'll have to eventually get out of there. I'll probably build a CO2 scrubber right here because once I crack open this whole area, the CO2 will fall in down in here. I should probably mop up this crap right here. This is kind of where everything from above is ending up right now. Oh yeah, so here's a skeleton. Ooh. So if you click on it, if I can click on it, uh, hello, bones. So it says it's a consumable ore, and it says it's coal. So it thinks it's coal. Details coal, but you can't sweep it up. I tried sweeping it up, even into a container that allows all, and it just sits there. It doesn't do anything. So that's kind of a bug. And if you build a tasteful memorial, like there's one here ready to go, they don't put the bones back in it. But if you reload the game, then these bones disappear. So it's kind of a, a weird thing. You can see all these uh, snazzy suits laying around. That's where everyone died. So sad. It's kind of the second mass death that I had to hit the colony with. I think we lost a really good artist in that big die off, so these little bottles really annoy me. I don't know how they get there. And sometimes you can empty them. How much is in here? Five kilos. That's quite a bit. So I'll check back in in a while after some more digging progress has happened. So I fast forwarded a bit and I got a lot more of the uh, digging done. Kind of got some more, almost at the bottom now. I've got this, just this last chunk left to do. Uh, and a little bit here. Got all this done. I, I got to take out the uh, ladders that I built. Um, and get kind of smooth pathways. And then I'm going to seal up some of the ones that I don't need anymore. And a bit of sweeping as well. It's coming along nicely. What, are, what I'm doing over here is I'm cracking through to this uh, really hot gas that's in here. It's, a, it's gaseous phosphorus and really hot hydrogen. It's at like 839 degrees Celsius. So I'm letting this water flood in here to cool it all down and turn it into a solid. We don't really need this crazy hot area. I might keep a little bit of the super hot area over in the middle of the map for kind of turning polluted water into steam, but we've got tons of water. We got, uh, I forget how many geysers on this map, but like 10 or something, and we're only using two of them. It'd be fun to try out building the steam thing, but it's not really necessary. 
you can see the water that is falling in here, dripping in here, it's turning into steam right away. But once this floods in, um, this will, I'm assuming, solidify right away. I'm curious to see how fat, oh, there it goes. There it goes. Let's see, what, let's see what happens. <laughs> oh, it's, oh, it's flooding up here. Super hot gases are floating up here. Oh, wow, look at that. It's like turning everything into steam. Wow. I do not want a dupe to go down there right now. <laughs> they will get fried, cooked. Wow, I didn't think the gas would like come up this way. Ah, oh, it's crazy. It's liquefying. <laughs> it's a giant popcorn machine, bubbling machine. Wow. Eventually it'll settle down. Oh yeah, it's solidifying. Look at this. Wow. Oh, that was cool. I didn't think this was going to happen. I thought it would just flow down and turn into a solid. Whoa. Like 200, 300 degrees in here. Oh, we're getting sand. I think that sand is coming from the polluted water getting boiled. Oh yeah, more sand. It's like self self sealing. Whoa. Huh. That's pretty cool. I wonder when it will settle down, if at all. So this was all eight hundred degrees now and now it's or 800 degrees before, now it's all 300 or so. Interesting. Well, we'll come back to this later. We don't want any dupes to go in there right now or they'll just get, they'll melt. Oh, look at this liquid, liquid phosphorus. That's cool. Got quite the mixture of things in here. That water, yeah, it's kind of solidified everything in there. You can see this igneous rock, 267, 266, it's rapidly cooling. The water is just sucking the heat out of it. Oh, this water broke through. Must have broke through the phosphorus. Just realized it's pouring outside. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but it's very, very, very heavy rain. <laughs> kind of like, kind of like in the game. Yeah, this water is just gonna suck, suck all the heat out of this area, which is what I wanted to do. It's probably safe to go dig this little bit of sand here. It'll be cool in the future to see what uh, some of the new, new elements are gonna be used for. I know there's helium and there's steel and there's a few other ones that people have discovered in kind of debug mode. So I, I'm guessing there's going to be some kind of metal, metallurgy kind of system where you mix metals or mix materials together to make new materials. The new update's coming pretty soon, I think, maybe, you know, I'm going to guess a couple weeks or, or so. It has a whole new uh, system for uh, kind of disease and how disease spreads. So it kind of starts at the outhouse, I think, and everything the dupe touches after that can kind of get infected. So that'll be cool, managing diseases. Um, and there's a new water pump. If you check out the clay uh, forums, uh, there's a they did a they did a Twitch stream recently with some of the new stuff. So yeah, water pumps. So you can kind of isolate where the dupes get their water from, which will be 
good because sometimes they're really stupid and they'll go like try to get water from an area like this and they'll get like a thousand grams at a time and it'll just go in like an infinite loop of collecting water so it should be a good update okay it's at like 100 degrees here maybe I shouldn't have sent them down yeah let's cancel that steam recently shot out we don't want them to oh it look it all turned to sand huh I'm gonna poke a hole in this right here let this cool water flow down into this bottom area cool things down even more I use this uh, screenshot mode alt s so much to move around the map quickly so I zoom out and then pan and then zoom back in Oh, it looks like this dupe's gonna get stuck in here that's kinda why I use the ladder ladder system um, with four four tiles in between each ladder because they never get stuck when you build the ladders I won't say never but very rarely and then you can carve out the four tile section between and they usually won't get stuck right near the end here I'm just going to kind of do it level by level but up above that's what I was doing uh, if you can see this is kind of an example here so I would do like a row of ladders four tiles apart for the whole area that I want to dig out kind of like this and then I would dig out the sections between and then I would eventually go and clear the ladders out and fill in the little holes kind of tedious but the nice thing about building the ladders in this way is that they like I said they don't get stuck I made a mistake here and these are five apart so I can't really just dig right through I wonder if I should make the title of this video the digging episode kind of boring I know but I kind of just wanted to see if this was possible and once this is all done I might be able to I've always have excess polluted water I might just let it flow to the bottom and see if the polluted water will eventually like fill the whole area kind of like a giant swimming pool we'll see if that's possible this magma is pretty cool 1600 degrees but it turns into igneous rock pretty quickly when it cools down actually I think it just says on the thing when it, when it cools down let's see yeah at 1400 degrees it turns into igneous rock Some funky uh, <laughs> funky water dripping going on here I'd love to hear your ideas on base designs and kinda how you lay things out it's pretty interesting to see other people's bases sometimes they look pretty cool mine are really boring I, I just they're more functional than nice looking and even sometimes they're not very functional kinda grow organically go little weakrins go spuster your way through there it's so much faster with 16 dupes though than 40 which is counterintuitive but 40 dupes was just like a total crawl we were going at one frame per second I haven't done any videos on uh, Don't Starve. It's one of my favorite games by this this developer. Let me know if you'd be interested in me doing any videos on that game. I have the uh, the two expansions as well. I haven't played it in a while, so be pretty rusty. Let's see how the other area is going. This is how I get to the side of the map. Oh, we still got steam for me. That was fun. Okay, now the other way. Now 
I'll probably get stuck. Sometimes I leave, leave a little escape hatch because they tend to get stuck. So I've skipped forward quite a bit. Uh, the dig continues on. We're a bit deeper now. Still, uh, still not all the way to the bottom, but I'm going to actually crack open this one piece right here. And this caused a lot of problems last time when I dug through here because the air pressure in here is really low, around 1,000. And over here it's around 4,000. So the problem was that this CO2 scrubber area, half of the CO2 goes down here, and if the air pressure gets too high here, then problems happen. I think I'll be able to deal with it by just expanding this CO2 scrubbing room if I need to. So we'll see. I kind of want to see what happens when I equalize the two. So I'm going to cut this out here and hope for the best. <laughs> so it's open. We should see most of this polluted oxygen flow this way to the right. The temperatures are quite a bit different as well. Oh, well, maybe not. They were a while back, but now they're fine. Pretty similar. 25, 25. This area over here, uh, it's just been kind of in a steam loop. You can see the sand building up here, so some polluted water makes it its way down, gets converted into steam, clean water, and then sand is the byproduct, I guess. So this will probably just keep cycling like this for quite some time. I eventually want to crack it all open and let the water flow in more and cool this area down. I guess if we open up this cold biome to this hot area, it should uh, we should see some fireworks. Or even opening up the lava right here, magma, to this cold biome. Could see some crazy stuff. One dupe did die down here. Um, got stuck and I didn't want to go back and load from a save because loading the game takes so long now. I put the, a couple showers back in. I don't know why I did it. I guess I felt sorry for them. Dirty little grimy duplicates. But they waste so much time in there and I think they still get ill. So I might actually disable them. I think it's pretty much just a time waster. Suffocation. Yeah, this is when you get lots of lag, you get people suffocating when they got tons of oxygen. They just uh, forget to breathe, I guess. Too much lag. I should really cut a hole through here. And that way all the CO2 could drop down to the very bottom of the map. I think I'll do that. That way we can set up our CO2 scrubber at the very bottom of the whole map eventually. What's this food beyond reach? This is just annoying because there's lots of food. There's half a million food. Come on, dummy dupes. Something weird is going on here. It says polluted dirt is zero, but there's polluted dirt in this compost. It even shows it right here. It's kind of odd. See if we can deconstruct one of these. See if the polluted dirt falls out. It's there now on the ground. Polluted dirt, 130 kilograms. Doesn't show up here though. Unless there's some lag. Hmm. Oh, there it is. I guess when it's in the compost it doesn't show up. 28 kilograms of polluted oxygen in this room. <laughs> wow. I'm surprised it hasn't thrown, uh, I'm surprised it hasn't blown up. I'll probably open this up. There we go. It should all square out of there. Get those dupes to clean the air for us. Cycle 2651. Played for 201 hours. Holy crap. Some of that was AFK. Some of that was me not uh, at the keyboard. 
autopilot. But a lot of it was. That's kind of scary. 33 Weezwort seeds. Got a bit of a... Uh, got a bit of those. It's looking good. Looking pretty empty. It's as if the asteroid could collapse on itself. All this space. It's funny, we had one space heater up here. It was like minus 100 degrees here in this whole area because of my oxygen cooler. I put one space heater in there for not very long and it just cooked the whole area. Pretty crazy. How's the oxygen look? Oh, pretty good. <laughs> this area. And this will vent out once we connect this. All this should flow out of here. I'm guessing it takes a bit of CPU to model all this, <laughs> all these gases. It's fun to look at it at this kind of bird's eye view. So I skipped uh, way ahead again, quite a few hours, because uh, took a while to dig all this out. Pretty much done now, um, except for these little bits at the top. I still want to do a bit of cleanup, um, some sweeping and stuff, but. I'm pretty much done the bulk of the digging. There's some kind of little bits over here I want to clean up. And I might want to square this off just so it's nice and pretty. But uh and this area as well. It's this is right now it's the polluted water kind of pit. But I might make a little canal that goes down to the bottom and deal with the polluted water down here. I'm not really sure yet. This area I also have this area to dig out, but it's kind of a little bit rough because I getting into these magma pockets is gonna kind of burn my duplicates to death. So I can dig out the slime bits and kind of dig around it, but I don't want to dig right into it. And this area down here might be the perfect place to, uh, if I widen it out a bit, to make like a steam generator. Not a steam generator, but a place I can take polluted water and boil it off and clean it. I've seen a cool design by other uh, other YouTubers out there where they build kind of like a pyramid of air permeable tile and at the bottom of each pyramid they put a little collection bucket where they put um, a liquid pump so what happens is the polluted water comes down, you drip it on the hot surface, turns into steam the steam rises and gets trapped basically turns to liquid and gets trapped on the top side of the air permeable, air permeable gas permeable pyramid and then kind of rolls downhill into uh, the two sides and then you can pump it out. I really have no need for fresh water. I have s basically enough to run the whole base and I found another two geysers here. There's one here one here. I think in total there's like eight or nine on the map or something. I should probably count them but so I kind of wanted to get this video done. Uh, it's still going to take a while to finish out this last little bit but I didn't want to didn't want to wait through all that. I'll continue on. I'll finish it off and I'll probably have one video where I maybe show that, s that steam making machine um, and the rest of the cleanup. I also want to try to seal off a few rooms in here and make vacuums and see if that helps the performance. I put a new CO2 scrubber down at the bottom here because that's where all the CO2 is ending up. I'll probably have to build a room to pump all the chlorine into and maybe sacrifice a dupe to get a little morb farm going again and get rid of all this chlorine. But I want to dig out all this, these chlorine areas as well. I also put a lavatory down at the bottom here because when the dupes are working down here, if they need to go to the bathroom, they can just use this one down here. So we're only using two geysers, this one here for some of our air scrubbers and then one up here this one right at the top here, we're pumping out of this one and we're pumping it down into this little room here. If I show my, you can see this is the kind of the path it travels and I've got a valve so I can kind of tr control how much water I want in this reservoir and then I pump, out of, pump it out of here to actually use it. If I need extra water I could always open this up but I'm not really using that. There's an extra one here I'm not using. Let's just see how many there are, I'm curious now. So one, two, three, four, 
five, there's one in here, six, seven, eight, nine, I think there's nine that I can see. I don't think there'll be any down here, so I probably missed one or two, but I think there's nine. So yeah, ample, ample supplies of fresh water. Oh, there's one trapped over here. Uh, let's if we see. There's one trapped right here. I couldn't actually get any water out of it because it's kind of in the neutronium, but it's kind of cool to see the map at this scale too, with the heat overlay. So it's generally cold, but I definitely want to square this off, make it nice and nice looking. And once I have everything cleaned up, I want to see if the performance gets better. And then I might scale up the duplicates again and see if I can get to 100 duplicates. Let's go through some of the overlays here. Power. I might have a heavy watt wire that goes down this cavity so I can do power down here as well. It's the piping, liquid piping, gas piping, decor. I could probably improve the decor in this grow room a bit. And I should seal off this heavy watt wire room in here they're able to see in here right now, which isn't good. We have way more power than we'd ever need. Um, we're not using a lot of <laughs> a lot of this power. It's, uh, how much is it? Let's see. I think it peaks out at 7 kilowatts. But I'm only ever using around... Well, I guess max, I'm using 7 occasionally, but... The other thing I did was the kind of radiator system that I had in this grow room, the liquid piping behind the, that radiated through this whole area and then kind of circulated through here. I removed it all because what happened was this, all this polluted water just got used up basically. I don't know how and then eventually it just froze solid even with this heater that I used to have here. But we're, we're maintaining cold temperatures because we've got a lot of weasworts in here and I'm pumping in occasionally cold oxygen, clean oxygen, to maintain air pressure. And I also have this one LG deoxidizer maintaining pressure in here as well. So, so far, for about, I guess, 100 cycles or so, 50 cycles, it's been cold enough and high pressure enough, so this is working. We have 225,000 algae left. And in this room up here, a little puffed room, I think we have a lot of slime. I haven't opened up this door in... Let me zoom out here. can't remember where it is. Oh yeah, up here. So amazingly, this puffed is still alive. Oh, it's getting cold in here though. Oh, it's getting way too cold. I might want to put a heater in here for him, keep it nice and warm. But the amount of slime in here is there is about a hundred and thirty thousand kilograms of slime in here. If I ever run out of algae, I'll just crack open the store, and the dupes can can uh, turn it all into algae. Still a little bit of sweeping to do around here. And I should probably heat up some areas so things just kind of thaw out a bit. But no need yet. Oh, I kind of cleaned up my graveyard. And eventually I want clean oxygen in the base. But we just got to send as much as we can to the puffed and get the dupes to breathe all this polluted oxygen. And then eventually they'll be able to use the clean oxygen. Everything's kind of overpressurized right now though. That's the problem. Let's see what the pressure is like here. The pressure in this area down here used to be around 12 kilograms per tile, and now it's down to 2. Eventually, once this gets a bit lower pressure, we can send some clean oxygen in here. I mean, the whole map, the goal is to have the whole map clean oxygen. So we'll sequester the chlorine and get, the, get some morbs to eat it up. We'll use up all the CO2, and we'll get the dupes and puffed single puff to eat all this polluted oxygen and then we'll be able to just fill the map with nice clean oxygen. I've done that here pretty much.
except for this. This area down on the bottom is actually sealed off. It's the CO2 that's trapped in there. That's pretty much it for this episode. Uh, it's been fun, kind of fun, digging all this out. Usually I just kind of set up a bunch of orders and then let, you know, do some other stuff in a different window while this is just, while the dupes carve all this out. Sometimes they get stuck, but it's pretty rare. Anyway, so hope you like this. Um, don't forget to subscribe if you want to get alerted on future videos. And as always, thanks for watching.